Um, our study focused on babies. And we studied babies. children. Babies. Mm -hmm. We studied okay. babies. We started doing some 10-month-olds. The toddler module, which is what we help standardize at our site, goes all the way down to 12 months. I felt that Ezra was special from day one. Is this in the way? Sorry, Vince. Let me move it a little bit. They're kind of a little wrinkly, huh? They're really soft. Mm -hmm. He's still work. He's still learning. Ezra had this blue chair that he was really content in, and he'd rather drink his bottle in that than be held. He was late on all of his milestones, and he had some pretty early signs of autism. I had to work hard to get any kind of social smile or reaction out of him, like throwing him up in the air, giving him deep pressure and tickles. He seemed fixated on objects, especially wanting them off of surfaces like countertops and tables. Ezra didn't like making eye contact, but he did get a lot of attention from his older siblings. I can see the baby in the mirror, look! Baby Ezra! <laughs> Hello, honey! <laughs> oh, look! He reached that! Oh, good job, baby! <gasps> oh, look! He actually, he was actually holding that! I mentioned my thoughts about him possibly being autistic to other people and it, this was a really lonely time for me because nobody believed me. No one took my thoughts seriously. They just kind of brushed me off saying, oh, you're worrying too much. And I felt like I just had to wait for that day when he was that magical age when a doctor would actually see him and diagnose him. And that was extremely difficult because I had no one to talk to about it. Nobody would listen to me, especially my husband, my wonderful husband. Even he was in denial for over a year. When Ezra was a little over a year old, I went to an autism conference and asked him, hey, I have a child, I really think he might be autistic, but he's too young and no one will see him, what do I do? He gave me the advice to go see a speech pathologist and then have that person recommend a doctor who they personally knew to diagnose him. And we did it and it worked. The speech pathologist saw the signs of autism right away, but of course, she's not allowed to diagnose that, and so she recommended to her friend, hey, he's an obvious diagnosis. We got him scheduled. Of course, there was a long waiting list. By the time we got there, he was about 21 months old when he went in for the assessment, and the doctor at the time assured me that she was not going to diagnose him, and he was too young. Well, after about a half an hour, she was looking at him pointing out behaviors he was doing and saying, oh yeah, so that's autism. And I thought to myself, well, I guess we'll be walking home with a diagnosis. We used to live in an RV and we traveled to all the national parks in the U.S. In the RV, we learned a lot and we post daily of our unique normal. Please consider subscribing. We've had a lot of people comment and talk about how long waiting lists are. One person said Canada is a two-year waiting list where they live. One person in the UK said my doctor won't give a diagnosis, won't even do an assessment until they're school age. That's five, six years old. That's a long time for a parent to have an autistic child and not know if they're autistic. Thinking about that and reflecting on that, I've always wondered how young can a person be diagnosed with autism? So I asked a professional. Dr. Spenlove has been a clinical psychologist since 2012 and he specializes in the psychological assessment of infants and children. He worked for three years working on and updating the ADOS test, which is the gold standard for autism testing. And the conversation that I had with him was really eye-opening. So please tell us, um, how young can a child be to be diagnosed with autism? Right, so let's go back to the ADOS system okay. and, and the purpose of my postdoc position. Mm -hmm. um, our study focused on babies. And we studied babies. children. Babies. Mm -hmm. We studied okay. babies. We started doing some 10-month-olds, mostly 12 months through four and a half. We did that because in, in prior diagnostic manuals, it said that there had to be symptoms before age three. And the result of that was that providers were waiting till, until kids were three years old and then diagnosing autism. In our study, we followed kids every six months. So we saw them at 12 months, 18 months, 24, 30, 36, and so on. And what we found was right around two, 24 months, we called it the two-year-old corner because they are, they are going to take a left and have autism or take a right and not have autism. You would see these variability of things going on like this, but right around two, they all started to uniformly have all the symptoms of autism. And the reason that is is because sometimes the symptoms of autism are not going to be shown until the developmental level of a child who should be doing other things. But right around two is when we would see, oh, there it is, right? Because think about a two-year-old who's typically developing. They want friends, they want to share, they want to run around, they want to have you know, toys, they're, they're jealous, 
toys that are often shared well. There's reciprocity in, in interaction. The earliest we can look for it is 12 months. The most sure is by 24 months and beyond. In my, in my personal work, the youngest I've diagnosed a child with autism was 14 months. Put in the comments what you think about an early diagnosis. Do you think we can accurately diagnose a child from 14 to 24 months? Or is it just fine to wait till school age, five or six years old, to get the diagnosis? The first 10 minutes of the ADOS is usually free play. There's a big dump truck, right? This kid at 14 months flipped it over and for seven of the 10 minutes sat there and was spinning the wheel. There you go. <laughs> and he did that to the ignoring of everything else going on. And I'm, I'm a very goofy guy. I get really goofy with the kids. <laughs> couldn't get his attention, huh? I couldn't get him to look he at me He just liked that wheel. Yeah. So that was one of those things where it's like, okay, even, even at 14 months, kids should look when you get super goofy. Yeah, especially know? for several minutes. The ADOS goes on for another 50 minutes sometimes. And throughout that whole time, he was looking for circular things, things that mm -hmm. spin. And he wouldn't request. He didn't have eye contact. He didn't combine eye contact with speech or gestures. It was just, it was clear at 14 months. Yeah, that sounds a lot like our son Ezra, and you can see that video here. The creators of the ADOS system, who by the way is, her name is Kathy Lord, so Dr. Lord and her team, Okay. who had created the ADOS in the, in the creation of ADOS 2, they created what's called the toddler module. And the toddler module, which is what we help standardize at our site, goes all the way down to 12 months. You can, you can get a pretty good idea of a child's risk for autism, like real risk, beginning at 12 months. Remember, if you have a child who's autistic, you're in good company. You can see here a video about what benefits can really come from getting an autism diagnosis early. And here's an autism playlist.